Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Current, the North Central Region Water Network's speed networking webinar series. The network is an extension-led collaboration among land-grant universities in 12 Midwestern states working to build capacity for effective decision-making on water-related issues. I'm Rebecca Power. I'm director of the North Central Region Water Network, and I will be your moderator. The purpose of the current is to increase access to university extension programming and research that can strengthen water resource management across the Midwest. Uh, we have four presenters today um, for, uh, instead of the usual three, so you get, um, you get uh, double for your price of admission on one. Madi El Casey from Iowa State University, Walt Sell from Purdue University, and Lisa Holscher from the Indiana Conservation Cropping Systems Initiative, and finally, Paul Gross from Michigan State University. Our topic today is developing a land-grant institution soil health network in the North Central region. Uh, like I said, our format is typically a three 10 minutes three 10-minute presentations, and, uh, but we have uh, uh, Walt and Lisa doubling up, and we uh, will take questions and have discussion at the end. As a reminder, all of the webinars are archived on the North Central Region Water Network website at northcentralwater.org, uh, and we've got uh, quite a number of, of webinars there for you to review, and uh, the information is, is mostly all still extremely current. With that, uh, we'll go ahead and get started with our first presenter. Uh, Madi El Casey is a professor of soil management and environment at the agronomy department at Iowa State University. His research focuses on the effect of cropping systems, tillage systems, and crop residue management on soil health, soil carbon dynamics, and greenhouse gas emission. Also, he has studied the interaction effects of agricultural practices and environmental factors, uh, like climate change, um, on agricultural systems, sustainability, and productivity. His research and extension activities focus on developing sustainable management practices that improve uh, productivity and the environment. With that, Mari, yes. go ahead. Uh, thanks, Rebecca, for the con uh, introduction. Uh, as Rebecca indicated, I'm a faculty at the agronomy department here at Iowa State University. And uh, what I, I will cover with you today is some update on the Soil Health Conference as part of the Soil Health Initiative here at Iowa State in collaboration with NRCS. Uh, I was asked to present about lesson learned from uh, the conference. And I find the best way to do that is really to look into the evaluation outcome. So I'll cover with you some of the lessons we learned from uh, this. Oops. Okay. Uh, the the conference goal basically is set to provide information on the practices uh, that help do it. So help. So with that in mind, we developed the conference to include the speakers from Land Grant University and uh, uh, USDA and industry to give us wide, uh, broad perspective on soil health. And through the conference, uh, we offer CCA credit and uh, to uh, crop advisors and also has some a breakout session through the conference. Uh, the number of people attended the conference was approximately 290 people. Even at that time of the conference, we were uh, in very bad weather condition, but uh, we were encouraged by the attendance during that time. Uh, we probably lost about 30 people that didn't attend the conference. And we have a website for this conference. You can look at your time at the presentation, or the presentation for the conference is loaded on this website. Uh, some of the lesson we learned, which is 
basically as uh, response by the attendees and on their evaluation to the event. And that's the first time we convened such a conference at Iowa State. And through that conference as well, uh, we have the Regional Soil Health Initiative, which is uh, included uh, about 10 states in the Midwest, and I'm part of the team leadership on, on this uh, regional initiative. So through the evaluation, we looked at the other uh, main uh, outcomes. I thought I'd share with you for uh, your reflection on that and future activities. Uh, and one of the questions we asked, what influenced you to attend the conference? Uh, about 70% they said the topics of the conference, that's the main the driver, How about 38% the speakers. So there is other uh, uh, also interest that uh, driven the conference. So that gives us some ideas of, in developing future conference. Also, we, we looked at the knowledge of the attendees before and after the conference. So if you look at the left side of the screens, how do you uh, rate your knowledge, understanding of the soil health before the conference? So there is kind of, if you will, a normal distribution. If you look at the from excellent about 16%, if you look at the good about 58%, which is really a good indicator. There is a lot of interest in the soil health of people have a good background knowledge. Only 26% they said poor. So on average, the rating for the knowledge of understanding is about 65%. And after the conference, uh, after attending the sessions, the, the question asked, uh, what's the level of improvement? So greatly improved about 23%. Uh, uh, Slightly, slightly improved about 63%, 14% the same, on average of us approximately uh, 70%. They will look at the application and benefit of, of the information they gained through this conference. So there is a wide range of uh, uh, professionals from farmers to you know, agronomists and uh, CCA. Um, uh, agronomist attended the conference on an average we so it's about 58 percent they indicate they will use this information in their profession. Uh, farmers 26 percent indicated they applied some of these principles which is encouraging as well. In teaching about 73 percent and 14 percent others on average about 56 percent as uh, total rating. And when we ask about uh, did the conference provide you with a valuable professional development, 96% they indicated yes, 6% they indicated no. Some of the feedbacks, and which is very good information for future planning any activities or conferences, and these some of the topics they indicated that of high interest for any future uh, activities. Uh, one is to, and this is not listed in any particular order, just uh, some of the responses we put together here. Barrier to practices uh, adoption uh, that improves soil health. Practices that improve soil health practices, like no-till cover crop. As, uh, et cetera. Uh, soil health indices, one of the other issues they would, would like more information on that and use in the field. Uh, the other aspects, soil biology and effects of, effects of chemical fertilizer, pesticides, and manure use. Then a uh, major issue, which is repeated many times, is the economic of soil health. And then uh, also, quantifying soil health uh, to, uh, dem by demonstrating uh, properties such as water infiltration, so that you need more quantified data. Then the links between soil health and water quality, which kind of major current theme 
uh, for uh, through the evaluation. Uh, to continue with these topics, the future topics, and to, to cover soil health test methods, whether lab or field, that need to be also explored, soil biology and soil health. Then the correlation between soil health and yield. We talk in soil health, and soil health is kind of in the abstract. So most of the attendees, they would like to see some quantifiable numbers to relate soil health improvement, whether soil organic matter or aggregate stability or infiltration to yield. Then some of the suggestions about the integration of agroforestry and soil health in how that could be integrated in our carbon system. Then the sociology of soil health, which is uh, one of the presentation was at the conference, it's about the perception of farmers by one of our sociologists here at Iowa State. So these kind of uh, trigger some interest in more in-depth discussion about this. Then the practical topics and less emphasis on the basics that uh, to balance between the research and the practical application. That's one thing to keep to keep in mind. Um, then a presentation needs to be focused on the research and uh, practical strategies. So kind of mix between the two uh, things. Uh, some comments about the speakers, the general discussion, they would like to see more farmers involved in the panel of discussion or individual presentation, also industry involvement, even we have some, but uh, there is some emphasis to include more from ag industry, whether um, commodity groups or seed industry, otherwise to engage in the uh, presentation. Uh, keynote speaker also, they would like to see more of the practical aspects of that inspiration and encouragement. So, so that, that's one of the lessons we need to think about here. Uh, on the logistics side, there's uh, some few issues related to, um, including luncheon speaker, people like more network rather than listening to a speaker since they are listening all day to a different presentation. Also emphasis on the breakout session, and that has to be concurrent sessions and the possibility of repeating some of, of the session because they cannot attend all these sessions. Also the balance between education, uh, between educating farmers and other education needs for CCA and other agronomy, so it has to be some Mix. Um, uh, just last reminder that based on this evaluation, we are encouraged to continue with the Soil Health Conference. We'll be convened here in Iowa, in Ames, Iowa, 2017, on February 16 to 17. It'll be a two day conference. So I see my time is up, and if there's any questions. Thanks, Madi. And uh, if folks have questions for, for Madi or for our other presenters, please go ahead and put them in the chat box, which uh, should be on the left-hand side of your screen uh, toward the bottom of the screen. And uh, we'll keep those questions uh, until the rest of the speakers are complete. Uh, so the Soil Health Conference in Iowa obviously uh, did a lot to build the conversation in Iowa around soil health or strengthen linkages between people interested in soil health in Iowa, it also served as a, a kickoff meeting for um, the development of, of a land-grant institution soil, soil health network that um, Paul Gross is going to be talking about, our, our third speaker, but I just wanted to put that into context. Um, our, our next speakers are uh, Walt Sell and Lisa Holscher, and they're going to be talking about uh, a program in Indiana. So what we're doing first is 
uh, looking at some of the existing or just a couple of examples of existing soil health related programming going on in the region and then Paul is going to um, give us an overview of, of what we're trying to do in the north central region to develop um, an extension and, and land grant network. So Walt Sell is the Extension a &R Assistant Program Leader for Agriculture and Natural Resources in Soil Health, Water Quality, and Nutrient Management at Purdue University. Walt works closely with county extension educators and campus faculty and specialists to transfer results of groundbreaking research to real-world applications for farmers and agribusiness personnel. Walt also works to build on Extension's participation and representation in the Indiana Conservation Partnership to address issues on soil health, water quality, and nutrient management. And Lisa Holscher is the Soil Health Program Manager, Conservation Cropping Systems, uh, for the Conservation Cropping Systems Initiative. In, in Indiana. CCSI's focus is to provide consistent and correct soil health outreach and education and technical assistance to advance the adoption of soil health systems throughout Indiana. CCSI is a collaborative effort. Uh, she's going to tell you about the different collaborators there. Um, and Holscher works from both top down and grassroots up across the network to leverage agency and individual strengths to deliver soil health messaging and provide support in helping farmers successfully adopt best management practices. She also coordinates the collection of samples and data to support ongoing on-farm research projects. OK. Walt and Lisa. Well, thank you so much. Uh, Lisa and I are very happy to be with you today to share a little bit about uh, what's happening in Indiana with soil health. Uh, we're going to kind of focus it with the Indiana Conservation Cropping System Initiative, or CCSI and how under that infrastructure, uh, Extension, Soil and Water, Indiana State Department of Agriculture and Natural Resource Conservation Service, as well as, as other partners including ag uh, associations and organizations, are all working together for soil health programming throughout the state. Thanks, Walt. So you already saw in the uh, first slides a little bit about CCSI. And CCSI, or the Conservation Cropping Systems Initiative, is a true collaboration. It is a partnership. And we talk, when we talk about the Indiana Conservation Partnership, we're talking about all of these agencies and organizations on the left-hand side of the screen. Towards the end of this session, you'll see some documents pushed out to you. And there will be some that include a little bit more background on the Conservation Partnership. But in addition to that, we have a number of other partners. And this just shows a few of the core partners in CCSI. As I said, we have a number of other partners. And we really work to find each of their strengths as well as individual strengths so that we can leverage leverage their human resources as well as financial resources to do our best in advancing soil health practice and system adoption across the state. One of the things that uh, is important about this partnership through CCSI is that each of the partners and agencies involved uh, know what our roles are and how we complement each other and how we develop that synergistic relationship. I'd like to share a little bit about what Extension's role is in the state of Indiana and through CCSI. Uh, one of the things that we take very seriously in Extension in CCSI is the science. Uh, we are very conscious of the need to provide scientific basis for our soil health outreach and education uh, throughout the state and through our events that we provide. And uh, extension is another role that extension plays is to provide uh, many of the educational components of the events that we hold. Uh, we have several uh, different field days and meetings through and other events throughout the state. Uh, throughout the year and uh, Extension provides speakers and presentations during those events. In addition to that, uh, we also are, have the opportunity to provide our participants with certification for their various um, uh, needs. We have uh, certification training for our private applicators. We have um, CEUs for uh, certified crop advisors, and we have our CH hours for uh, CCH hours for our commercial applicators. 
and Extension provides some of the required training uh, to get those credits uh, in during those presentations. And then one of the things that we're starting to get a handle on now and moving forward is to evaluate this process both from um, a, an, improve, an evaluation on how to improve our educational events as well as together impact and success stories so we can share that with our stakeholders and our funders. And then lastly, Extension works closely locally where the events are held with our other partners on the logistics and coordination of the activities. Thanks, Walt. And again, with that last slide of Walt, it really emphasizes how we work to play to each agency's strengths as well as individual strengths. Now, one of the things that we do in Indiana that's fairly unique is to provide some ongoing and systematic training across all of the Indiana Conservation Partnership, as well as ag professionals who work one-on-one -on -one with farmers and farmer mentors. You know, these classes were largely developed by NRCS soil health staff as well as Purdue staff, and they're really designed to provide a core understanding of soil health systems and practices. Now, again, in some of those handouts that will be pushed out to you, you'll see some sample agendas for these various classes. One of the things you may notice as you look at them is that what is now called core cover crops is what had been advanced cover crops. We're actually working right now to up our game on the advanced cover crops and the advanced crop conservation cropping systems classes to really reflect how the knowledge of our field staff and our ag professionals and our farmers have advanced. So it's a very dynamic thing. Now these classes are held on a regular basis. Some of them are scheduled annually, some of them are scheduled every other year. But again, it's very systematic. Now in addition to these core soil health courses, we also provide presentation and media skills training. Because, you know, if you can't deliver a message well, it may not stick with the farmers and landowners who we want to be adopting these soil health systems and practices. So this is just another way that we can support our staff out there. Our educational efforts include uh, many types of uh, formats. One of the most popular ones are field days for farmers and landowners uh, where we have it throughout the state. Uh, we provide uh, I think um, really top-notch field days where we go out and look at uh, different stands of different types of cover crops. We'll have a soil pit or two dug so that folks can look at the root systems and the soil structure. And then we'll also have some educational uh, things within the local farm shop or the near structure. And of course, a good meal doesn't hurt uh, for the success of the day as well. In addition to the farmer field days, we work to one-on-one uh, -on -one to provide technical assistance. We are also working to strengthen our outreach to our ag professionals and service providers for the producers, and then reach out to the landowners and agricultural lenders so they understand uh, the implications and the value of soil health in terms of uh, the land. In addition to that, we're working to uh, in partnership with our BOAG instructors and our 4-H volunteer leaders to do soil health education for 4-H and uh, high school age youth through BOAG and science classes. We have a really robust um, soil uh, career development event that's held throughout the state and they have state contests as well. And that uh, uh, has soil health aspects to that in addition to it. One of the things that I think that uh, we all realize and understand is the importance of research and how it's the foundation for everything that we do. We understand that uh, there's a lot of research that needs to be done in the soil health area in terms of um, both the soil properties, the nutrients, the economics, soil health tests and what they mean and how to calibrate and how to use them. In addition to that, um, I'd like to share that we are um, 
able to access the uh, expertise of social researchers like Dr. Linda Prokopi and Purdue and others in other institutions as well so that we can understand how farmers want their information, how farmers learn, and what, it, uh, what, farmers, uh, what makes farmers tick in terms of how they implement practices and adopt things on their farms. Yeah, it's really important to get that farmer impact, uh, to get that farmer input as far as how they're adopting things and the kind of research that they're looking for. Now, in our world of research, we have 14 sites across the state, 12 farmer sites, as well as five non-farm sites. You see the map up here. Now, this um, map, you notice that the state is divided into four regions. And this is just as important as these research sites because each region has developed a network of key conservation partnership staff, ag professionals, um, people who can help us direct our education and outreach and assistant needs specific to their area. We actually have monthly teleconferences for each region to discuss and identify the needs and the projects, the things they feel are needed to advance soil health practices and system adoption. You know, it's key that these regional teams are local because this is a grassroots-driven needs assessment, not necessarily top-down. And based on these teams' directions, we, meaning CCSI, we provide assistance in the form of anything from PowerPoint slides to publications or speakers, whatever the folks need in the field. This local network is really fluid. And we'll see people coming in and out of the network. And that really depends on what the local staff expertise is needed at the time and the availability of them. Thank you, Lisa. And I guess one of the things that uh, I'd like to share that's not up here on our slides is that uh, we've worked hard in Indiana to get buy-in with all our partners, and all the partners are totally committed to it. And, and I, I think uh, the other thing is we've worked hard to uh, be to so that all of our partners and everybody involved understands our message and everybody's roles and what uh, individuals' roles are. And then the other thing that we wanted to share about the partnership is that our communication. We work hard at communicating with one another. Uh, the last slide shares our uh, contact information, both email and phone numbers. And uh, also wanted to remind you that there are um, handouts and files available that are being pushed out here during the presentation for you to look at. Uh, thank you very much. If you have any issues, um, down those files, please don't hesitate to contact me. I will get them out to you. Thanks, Walt and Lisa and Rebecca. Yep, sorry, I was um, trying to get out of the loop of the, the download loop there for those files. Okay, now I seem to have cleared those away. And uh, again, if uh, folks have questions, uh, please go ahead and put them in the chat box. And uh, Angie and I were chatting about the potential for CCA credits for this, for this session. Um, so uh, we will look into those. and. Uh, if anyone is interested uh, in uh, in CCA credits, you can I'll put my email in the chat box, and you can send me a note, and at least we'll have your information um, uh, once we we check in with the CCA program. Okay, um, thank you, Walt and Lisa, and now we will move on to to Paul Gross, and Paul is going to be uh, bringing it all together uh, in looking at the the development of a soil health network in the North Central region. Paul has been a field crops educator in Isabella County, Michigan since 1991. During that time, he was an active member of the field crops area of expertise team, cover crops team, as well as the forage team. His programming has included planning, development, and implementation of field crops, forage, cover crops, educational programs in Isabella and surrounding counties. On-farm research includes corn, soybeans, and wheat variety trials, tillage, nitrogen management, cover crops, and soil health. 
most recent workshops include cover crops and building soil health as part of the Great Lakes Cover Crop Initiative. We've got a, a great diversity of expertise um, in this webinar. So Paul, thanks for joining us and take it away. You may need to press the talk button. Paul, are you there? It looks like you're still in here. And can you press the talk button on the uh, upper left, just below the audio and video um, module on your screen? There are we. Are we? Can you, am I on? Yes, you are. Yes, Perfect. I'm sorry. I, I couldn't get rid of. I was trying to get rid of the save uh, save files on the <laughs> screen, and it wouldn't allow me. So I apologize for that. But uh, it's it's certainly a, a privilege to be here and, and speak on behalf of our our project group. Uh, just like to. Uh, let you know who that is. Christina Corral from Michigan, uh, Kevin Herb, and, and Madi, our first speaker. Uh, talk just a little bit about our project for, for uh, trying to build regional capacity and, and soil health building. So, so we have a we, we had an opportunity to 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 start to work on uh, on trying to to put this this project together. And it's really been kind of interesting how how it, it's come together and some of the challenges as well. But this this particular team, our our, our challenge was to put together this North Central uh, Soil Health Work Group with representatives from uh, land grants uh, from across this 12 state region. And really, what we're looking at doing is is to provide the foundation for some ongoing uh, collaborative efforts uh, to to build the capacity in soil health across the region and share resources and, and those types of things so we can address the educational needs uh, uh, for, for uh, extension educators, for agency professionals, uh, agronomists, certified crop advisors, and, and all those uh, individuals working in the, in the soil health area. Uh, so we, as a group, we, we set, the, set some short-term and, and some long-term goals, uh, but we thought would, as, as we tried to put together this, this work group, this team, um, we thought it would be best, uh, we looked for opportunities to bring the group together. And the Soil Health Conference that was hosted, uh, hosted in, in Iowa uh, this spring was really an excellent opportunity to bring the group together. First, to, to provide some education, soil health education to the participants and then convene the work group afterwards to, to start trying to form and build uh, Build that capacity and build that work group. So, so one of our goal, we had some some of our short term goals that we were, were looking at is is again to build that build that working group with uh, within the land grant universities and 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 look and identify some of the gaps, some of the areas that uh, uh, we need to consider, we need to work on um, as far as is building that that type of capacity. Uh, some of our long term goals. Uh, Again, we, we, we want to build the capacity for each state's land grant uh, to deliver those soil health trainings, uh, look at what some of those research gaps are, what are the resources available. And really long term, we also want to look, uh, uh, provide some of the late the groundwork for some possible grants, uh, some larger types of grants that we may uh, address some of the research needs uh, that have been identified through this, this collaborative network. Uh, so, so we we put together uh, we put together uh, a plan and put together uh, basically uh, an outline of the things that, that we wanted to accomplish, both long term and short term. So, so we actually got together uh, after after the conference and, and had a brainstorming session, which was which was really quite quite interesting uh, to say the least, because there's a number of of different uh, ideas on, on how we should uh, address this and, and what kind of the capacities we had and, and, and some of the areas uh, that, that we needed to work. So one of the things that was kind of interesting, uh, you know, the ideas that we, we kicked around uh, during those brainstorming sessions were, 
we're uh, you know determining what those regional priorities are. You know, one thing that was kind of interesting is is uh, it was suggested in a number of cases of using the the common terminology kind of developed soil health uh, glossary because there's a number of different uh, different individuals use different terms for different things. So we, we needed to we really felt like uh, we needed to have a common glossary which everybody was talking about. And then we also talked about setting some some goals. Um, you know, kind of identifying the practices and activities that promote soil health, and you know, one of the one of the suggestions was, uh, for example, uh, by 2025, 25% uh, 25 of the farms uh, adopt at least three practices that are, are promoting soil health. Some of the things that are are kind of measurable, uh, and the other things that was uh, as far as the gaps that we with the group talked about was the soil health economics. That that seemed to be uh, the area which you know, and the farmers that I work with, and the individuals I work with, it's it's always trying to understand the economics. And I think what's also interesting is is being able to to engage uh, some of the the land renters, the land owners, you know, the farm managers, uh, and help them to understand the soil health and some of the concepts of soil health, because a lot of them uh, don't always understand what what farmers, what the extension educators and agencies are, are talking about when we talk about soil health and what it means from a productivity standpoint, from a water quality standpoint, and those types of things. So after, they, after the group uh, met, uh, we did uh, talk just a little bit about the, the survey summary. Uh, we had 25 participants in, in the group for, uh, that represented 11 states. And, and as a result of, of the, work, uh, the workshop after after the soil health conference, 80% uh, found that it was uh, either moderate or very useful for their participation. 84% uh, felt they had a real better understanding of some of the barriers uh, to soil health across the region, soil health education, in, in those types of things. And, and I think the biggest thing that, that came away from it is 96% felt that they made and developed some contacts, uh, networks from experts from out of state, excuse me, from across those states that they could consult with uh, when, if they need additional information uh, related to, to soil health and those soil health issues. Uh, some of the, the text responses, uh, some of the comments that received uh, as far as, uh, you know, under, having a better understanding of soil health, uh, you know, basically the network opportunities give every, all the participants an opportunity to, to understand what is going on in the other states, what research efforts are going on, what extension efforts are going on, and how maybe they can collaborate on some of those efforts um, as well. Also, uh, one of the comments that was, was interesting is, is how there's a number of different views of, of soil health and, 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 the, and the practices and those types of things. So, uh, and, and we also have a, a group that is very, uh, very opinionated about uh, some of their thoughts. Uh, which was uh, created some interesting uh, conversations in, in the work group, but it was very uh, it was very beneficial for everyone to have uh, have those discussions as we worked to build that group. And we also uh, identified a lot of the gaps and barriers that many of the states are experiencing the same types of things. Uh, the question of what are the biggest barriers to, to soil health adoption amongst the group. Uh, you know, I, I think the challenge, I think we all face that, is linking those economics of soil health to those other benefits as far as nutrient cycling, productivity, profitability of, of a production system. And, you know, and the ability to really identify, uh, you know, what those long-term benefits are. Many of the, many producers really look short-term, but the benefits of, of the soil health practices tend to be uh, long-term. The other thing is, regionally, there's a lot of differences even within our region. Uh, about specific information about soil health, uh, that's, a, that's a challenge. We need to, to identify some of that information and those resources uh, that we can use for programming. The other thing that was identified was uh, soil health tests on uh, measuring uh, some of the biological activity. Do we, do we really have good tests? Are we really comfortable with some of the tests that are out there? And, and maybe we need to work uh, a, a little bit to help identify what, uh, what some of those good soil uh, health tests uh, so we can measure some of those indicators. Uh, 
uh, barriers uh, still that we face in our state. Uh, you know, we have a lot of disagreement even within our some of our states. Uh, what uh, what constitutes soil health? So even within the region and within the states, we have differences of opinion. And again, the economic information uh, is we we find it really really important. Uh, you know, we look for more personnel if we were going to really address some of the soil health in, uh, issues within our states, within our, our universities. Certainly, more personnel is always uh, always beneficial and helpful, uh, and we need to with get better partnerships with with some of the agencies within our within our state. And uh, several several indicated the lack of a state soil health specialist. I know some states in the region have uh, individuals that are, are specifically work on soil health where others uh, others do not. So that's, that becomes a very own issue that we're still facing as we pull this pull this network uh, together. Uh, as far as the participants uh, in the conference as well as the work group that was assembled, uh, you know one of the things that was identified a number of times is is the opportunities for networking uh, that they felt was one of the biggest uh, benefits for participating in the new resources and the contacts that they've made, uh, who are some of the potential collaborators uh, that they might uh, might associate with. I think they felt that that was a very valuable part of the workshop as well. So from a next step standpoint, uh, our, our group is, is considering to, you know, we're, we're looking to take, uh, you know, capture some of the momentum that we gained from the conference and, you know, we to, we already have up a, 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 link, a soil health link on the North Central Water Network website. Uh, we're looking to summarize a lot of the trainings that are available, the resources that are available in, in the region, and, and put it into one document, post it online. Uh, we're continuing to explore funding opportunities to continue this effort. We, we feel like we have uh, uh, some opportunities to capture some additional revenue to continue building this network. Uh, and, and start looking at uh, and addressing some of the issues related to the, the soil health economics, and then we're you know we're obviously sharing sharing this in, uh, information on on this particular webinar. Uh, there's was a number of challenges as we we work, at, but we're still trying to gain the momentum that uh, uh, we had with the conference. Everybody we had 96 percent uh, really felt that it was valuable to pull the, the group together, and we just hope to capture the momentum of the first meeting as, as we move forward to build this network uh, to, to meet some of those long-term uh, goals that the, the group originally set out. So with that, I would uh, say thank you and uh, wait for questions. Great. Thanks, Paul. Okay. Um, let's uh, go to the chat box for questions. And uh, again, as a reminder, anyone can can post their questions there, and we've we've got a question from Les Everett in Minnesota, uh, which is a, a, a common question that uh, I think uh, those of us that have been involved in developing this initiative have rolled around ourselves. So happy to answer it here for you. Les says there is a proliferation of NGOs and agencies in Minnesota and across the Midwest that are addressing cover crops and soil health. Should the land grants set up their own? Or join with organizations across the region, and we'll start with with Paul, and and then other uh, our other presenters can chime in if they'd like to add. Well, I always feel like we always gain more working collaboratively across and with other organizations across the regions. Uh, I think the challenge sometimes is some of the, the organizations might have different goals and objectives than maybe the land grants do. Uh, but I don't think that's something that we can't overcome. Uh, but uh, I, I really think that uh, you know if we can if we can join collaboratively with other some of those other agencies. Um, I know in Michigan we have those opportunities and are doing that. And uh, I, I think we can just maximize our resources and our ability because we're all reached by collaboration. <coughs> Hey, Marty, or uh, uh, yeah. uh, yes, um, I, I think that's a, that's very good a question. But we already have some existed actually structure through the Midwest Cover Crop, which has involved many different land grant universities and really cover crop not only address just the cover crop production, but as well 
the uh, benefits of cover crop for soil health. In addition to that, just recently, during actually the uh, soil health conference last February, there is a meeting for forming a consortium for soil health, which is led by Sarah and, and Buffett Foundation, uh, and that involves some land grant universities. So the, there is some initial structure already in place. Uh, uh, we could capitalize and work uh, with our colleagues and, and these entities to advance our health issues. Great, thanks, Madi and, and Paul. And yeah, just to second uh, what they what they both have said, my understanding from the conversations is that uh, certainly this network is not exclusive for land-grant universities, but as Paul said, um, it's an opportunity for extension folks and, and specialists to uh, have conversations, uh, put that network in place for them, and, and of course, um, any uh, university network is going to be interfacing uh, with other entities and partners like, like in the Indiana Conservation Cropping Systems Initiative. It's a, a perfect example. And as, as Madi said, the Midwest Cover Crop Council also includes many other partners uh, beyond universities. Um, but, but we thought at least we ought to have our own um, you know, conversation among folks in the land grants to see what, what we needed to do or what we needed. And, and uh, certainly the question of how we're interfacing with partners has been a part of that conversation. OK, other, other questions for our presenters? OK, well, I have a question. Um, Paul, if uh, folks are interested, if folks on the webinar are interested in, in being involved or in engaging with this uh, network that you're developing or that you know, your team is developing, uh, what, what can they do? Well, the, the first thing, they are, uh, Madi and my contact information, our emails are on, uh, on our screen right now, and we certainly would love to have you, you contact us so we can uh, include you in our, our conversation, our, our outreach, our mailing list as, as we continue to, 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 build, this, to build this network. Uh, that, would be, that would be the first step, I think. Uh, and, and the more uh, the more people that are interested, the better off we are. Because the more ideas we can uh, bring to the table, the I feel like the, the stronger the network will be. Mm -hmm. Great. And then Rick Kel Rick Kelsch asks, uh, what do you plan as the next steps or two for the North Central Region Water Network funded soil? health regional discussion group. So Paul, if you could reiterate some of those next steps. Well, right now uh, we're working, we have a proposal uh, to, to SARE to help us uh, maybe fund the next step in, as far as bringing this group back together. And what, we're, what we're looking at doing is having another uh, soil health event, regional event. Uh, we're point, pointing right now toward uh, an event that we're planning in Michigan, at probably a similar time frame is the one this year in the spring, uh, where we will have a soil health conference and we'll similar to, to the Iowa State program, and we'll bring in the, the, the network members again to, 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 to bring the group together and start working in, in, uh, on, on some of these issues that we talked about as far as maybe setting up some, uh, some committees to start addressing some of those gaps. And, put forward some plans on how we're going to address some of the issues that we outlined in our short and long-term goals. Um, Rebecca, I may add a few other things to Paul's comments, uh, which is related to this regional initiative. It's, it's, a, it's a brand new initiative, just one year old, and still we have a lot of work to do. And basically, the structure of it is, is very fluid. And that's what we need to focus really on building and identifying a, a, a structure, if you will, for this regional initiative by involving many different colleagues from different states. And I think the regional meeting we did on the escorts of, of the soil health 
conference in Iowa, I think that's the first step to at least make everybody aware of the existing effort. I think the next step for us is really to come up with a structure that interface with the with the other activities like the soil health cover crop consortium, if you will, or the Midwest cover crop, and that's going to bring additional resources that we could work it through. And what Paul mentioned about the potential proposal to Sierra probably that's an opening to maybe build another activities on regional basis. Uh, and that's the exchange of expertise because one of the issues we identified during our the regional meeting uh, in February that states that are not on the same level of expertise or resources in, in the Midwest. How could we help other states to advance or help through that regional effort. So that that's one of the uh, other issues we have on, on our agenda to really try to hone it down and, and build kind of a structure how we collaborate for a regional basis. Great, Mati, thank you. Okay, other questions from from our participants. Okay, well, I'm going to ask another one then. I'm, this one is for Walt and for Lisa. Um, so mm -hmm. it sounds like you have a great collaboration built there in Indiana and lots of expertise. And, and I'm wondering uh, if you've talked about what success looks like for your, you know, for your um, Conservation Cropping Systems Initiative. You know, what if you had a, a vision for w what success would look like? What what would it be? Success comes in many different forms. You know, the easily quantifiable is success is, are things like the amazing adoption of cover crops. You know, in Indiana, we are non-regulated, and eight percent, eight or nine percent of our cropland, based on the last tillage and cover crops transect, had cover crops on them. That was in 2015. We expect that number to be much higher. And that, we believe, is in due in part to this collaborative effort to all of these agencies, all of these individuals and farmers working together to share information and to understand what some of these obstacles to adoption of soil health practices looks like. Another form of success, I think, really comes down to how these partners are working together. Over the last three years, as I've worked with CCSI, I have seen an amazing blossoming of local projects where groups are working together who had not worked across county lines, had not worked across agency lines, and that's even outside of the soil health realm. So we're seeing more and more of that and more collaboration, and I think that comes down to that networking to those regular phone calls and the ability of people to call up somebody like Walt and say, hey, do you know somebody who can talk about manure and cover crops? Or do the same with me or any of our other partners out there? That's just a couple of examples. Very good, Lisa. And I have just two uh, I'd like to share as well. Uh, one of them um, is that uh, we're reaching new people. Uh, we have had our traditional audience and what we're seeing now is that uh, our audience, our traditional audience is, is staying with us, but we're also seeing new people walking through the door or participating in our events or contacting us for information. And then the other thing that we look at as a success indicator is our capacity. We want to, we're working with our training sessions to build capacity with our staff among all the agencies. Uh, to both better equip us in terms of our knowledge of cover crops, but also to work with us in our uh, soft skills, our presentation skills, um, to um, uh, transfer the information as well. Did that help answer the question? Yes. Thank you. Great. 
Um, and we have another question from, from Les. Is there anything developing for regional research networking on this topic like CERA 17 for phosphorus? So I think uh, Les is referring to multi-state committees um, working uh, those uh, land grant multi-state committees. Is there one specifically oriented towards soil health? I don't know who's best is to take that question, whether it's Madi or or who. I think I'll defer to Madi. Madi might need to press the talk button there. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, as far as I know, there is no really regional project that uh, address the soil health research similar to uh, what we have w with other uh, research areas. I think the hope with this new consortium of uh, soil health uh, through the cover crop with Sarah, that might be uh, probably the place we could start uh, working with the different colleagues through the region to develop some of the research questions that are common to uh, different states uh, and basically the establishment of cover crop and, and its impact and so health for example it's it's more regional even within the state it's going to be uh, different from one area to another as we experience here in Iowa for example so I I think it's still the soil health probably research is going to be more uh, regional with the establishment of the new Soil Health Institute, which is sponsored by different profit and, uh, and non-profit organizations. And that just last February, uh, December, was actually uh, announced. So there is some research and outreach and education uh, component to that institute. So that might be help in accelerating the research component of regional basis. Thanks, Madi. And I see Matt Ruark, uh, who's on the line, uh, identified NCC C211. Um, and Janice, maybe you can help me with this. I don't know if we can uh, get Matt's uh, audio on and he can press the talk button and, and or if, if Madi, that rings any bells to you and you can um, further help. <coughs> If, if I'm not mistaken, I think this is the regional committee within the cover crop. And that's basically a work on regional projects related to cover crop and more focus on the research component and some outreach activities within the Midwest Cover Crop Council. So then they decide the Cover Crop Council, there is also a regional committee which is focused on the research component of it for different states. Okay. Perfect. And I see uh, uh, Matt has confirmed that in, in the chat box. Rick Kelsch has a question here. Uh, conversation started in the manure uh, group on the topic of, of manure and soil health at the recent North Central Region Water Network Conference. And Rick is asking, is anyone on today's webinar interested in being in touch with their emerging discussion group? Um, so you can go ahead and, and um, say yes. To, well, Rick, maybe if you put your email address in the chat box, then anyone interested can email you. I, I, I think Kevin uh, forward Rick uh, email uh, early this week, uh, and and I'm aware of that being a, a conference call being in May <coughs> on May 5th. So that <coughs> I'll be interested in joining that and uh, hopefully to participate in that conference call. Great, and you know one of the things about networks, of course, is that they're you know they are supposed to be flexible and nimble and able to respond. Um, quickly and uh, span boundaries. So, you know, it's all one landscape that we're working on and uh, manure and soil health and cover crops and 
water resource management uh, and are all all integrated in what we're trying to do our best uh, our best to keep them integrated through these networks. Okay, uh, we are at the end of our time, and I want to thank all of you for your for your participation in today's webinar, and thanks to our presenters as well for excellent presentations. Just want to let you know that we've got uh, some sessions coming up here. We're always the third Wednesday uh, uh, in the month at two o'clock Central Time, May 18th. We've got developing capacity for local watershed management. Uh, and uh, going to be talking about some some training programs there and core competencies and best practices. Uh, on June 15th, we've got green infrastructure for water resource management. July 20th, extension programs for youth, environmental, and STEM education. And then in August, uh, <laughs> seems a long time away, that we'll be talking about status of groundwater resources in the North Central region. So thanks everyone for joining. Uh, and uh, have a great rest of your day. Thanks, Rebecca.